know, at the beginning of the year, there was a bunch of things that kind of like all happened at the same time in a way that like kind of forced us to reckon with the fact that players had been feeling underserved for a while. There were some themes that were coming through really clearly. Some of that was that we we hadn't been delivering enough in some regards for them. That, that was really clear. And that one of those regards was different ways to play League. And that put further, I think, urgency on us to accelerate a bunch of the game mode work we'd already been exploring. At the very beginning, we were trying to say, hey, what is the kind of a lower stress League of Legends experience look like? I took a few weeks to a month at the end of last year to just make the prototype. That was just me sitting in a room coding for a while just to make the thing function. And that was just, you spawn in with eight people and they're, you're put on a team and you fight and there's a life bar and that's all it was. We had questions coming in around like, okay, well, when do you guys want to ship it? When do you guys want it to be done? And so like, we think we can do it by the end of 2023. And they're like, that's cool. Can you do it for summer? And I was like, no. Uh, and then they were like, what if we did it for Soul Fighters? And I was like, that's still summer. That's still summer. <laughs> and then <laughs> they were like, right. uh, try. And I was, All right, fine, we'll try. At that point in time, we had also recently gotten hacked, which really affected our ability to be able to deliver quickly. So it was a pretty stressful period. I was definitely pretty stressed out and couldn't sleep for like a couple of days. It just put a lot of pressure on, on us as a team. From conception, six months is a very short amount of time for a mode. The question was, can we make it work? So at that point, it was pretty obvious. It was like, okay, well, we're going to need help to do it because it was really important for Riot, and I think really important for players. Like, they haven't gotten a new mode in a while. We were excited about being able to try to directly respond to a lot of that player feedback because we felt we had it in us to do it. <laughs> I've added a few notes, things that I've observed. If we can get to it, it's probably okay, but uh, yeah, let's try. We did get a lot of help from leadership being able to green like saying that right now Arena is a top priority across League PC. And so that means some things like grabbing a bunch of folks from the champion team, for example, who had, who had a lot of the needed skills and having them jump over and help the modes team. It also meant in some cases cutting back on a few of the features we'd had planned for the original version of Arena when we were thinking we'd have a much longer time frame. A lot of those actually made it back in as the team found out ways to make things work. It was not hard to get people excited about the mode and to give people the thing that they wanted. And really it was about getting the wake up call at season start and understanding, no, this is actually very important and players really want this. And the team can do really, really good work when you give them the opportunity. It quickly gained a lot of momentum, like a lot of momentum, more than uh, most things I've seen while working here at Riot. And so just watching like people's ears perk up and be like, hey, have you seen that? That's pretty cool. For me, I was like, oh yeah, no, we gotta, we gotta go full steam on this. Get, please let me work on that. That sounds super exciting. So in some ways, the, the summer timeline kind of liberated us from the pressures of like perfection and allowed us to be a little more experimental and try stuff that we thought might be cool. But at the end of the day, it's like, it's still not enough, right? We don't want to just make a thing that people are like, oh, that was cool, and then, you know, stop playing it. I really wanted to try and make a mode that had legs. So taking this giant roster of champions who have all of these different strengths and weaknesses and saying, okay, actually what you're gonna do is just fight in a small circle, go, who's the best? Uh, you'll quickly get a lot of striation there. There'll, many champions will jump out at the top as like much better than many other champions. And so we attacked this issue in trying to balance the mode across all these different champions in a couple different ways. Augments are something that we crib from TFT. And by adding in this kind of random element to it, it helps equalize the skill level a little bit of like, hey, if I get the right augment and I build better around my augments, then I can beat somebody else who might technically be a more competent League of Legends player. There's cool builds and scalings and things that you can do that, that helps equalize the two. 
I think this is the part that I'm most excited about to see that what are the wacky combinations that people are being able to do with champions and augments and items. There will be a chance in your combat for Soul Fighter to make a cameo for like Set to jump in or Lux to jump in uh, or whatever. And these cameos will influence the battle by adding like new strategic elements. So Lux will kind of scan around the arena and ult people who cross her laser's path. And Gwen shows up and will shroud champions and protect them from projectiles. I think our first cameo was set uh, and seeing set just to smash people on a map. It's like, okay, I'm very annoyed that Set killed me, but it was really letting a lot of the credence to our original design thinking on, hey, you know, we're creating this compelling experience. If I lose, it's not that bad. The mode requires a difference in perspective. Like, we want this to be a mode where it's okay to fail. The reason why the teams are two-person sized is we wanted as many champions to be playable as we could. A lot of champion kits don't work in a 1v1 situation. Like enchanters, they need an ally to buff up. A lot of their power budget comes from supporting somebody else. 2v2 creates a situation where you can play a support and an AD carry. You could try like two supports and make it work with the augments. With a mind towards class balance, we were able to introduce mechanics here that changed up the fight from round to round in ways that gave those champions who weren't just great at face mash fighting with each other in the small circle, ways to win as well. There are pretty fundamental differences between Arena and Summoner's Rift. In Summoner's Rift, there's often a kind of defender's advantage where even if you're getting chased down, eventually you'll make it to a turret or some other defensive zone, your teammate or something, where we really need to empower the aggressor if we want stuff to happen. But in Arena, it's sort of the opposite. The whole game is pushing you towards the center, closer and closer together. And so action will happen. There's no way to avoid it. We knew that we had a ring of fire that was going to start closing in on the map as the round went on. We specifically designed the center of each map to be a different shape. So on one, there may be like a walk around with a brush in the middle. And that means that everybody is trying to get into that brush and fight over that specific brush. On another map, there's a river in the middle and it essentially blocks off that same middle zone into three separate zones. One of the innovations that we've done on this mode is we've actually introduced a new terrain type to League, what we're ultimately calling deep water. And the idea is that it's impassable, but you can see over it. A ranged player wants to keep you out at their auto attack distance, right? That's their zone of maximum power. And a melee champion, similarly, their zone of power is when they are up close. So the deep water basically helps with that problem because it now provides protection for the ranged character without obstructing their auto attacks or their abilities. And because of that, they have the ability to now essentially kite on the other side uh, in a way that they haven't been able to before. Getting kind of that combo of augments, maps, and cameos in, and starting to see the pieces come together during our playtest, finding ourselves kind of just yelling during our playtest because we were having fun, that's when it really came together. <laughs> Whoa. Look at back here. Oh my god. Oh wow. <laughs> It was definitely like this really cool moment of like, oh god, I have to do this whole mode by summer to, oh no, we're going to do this whole mode by summer. And, you know, all of these cool artists and, and UX designers and engineers and like just so many people pulled together to make this thing work that it's, it's a huge point of pride in the lead team. Like it's a team that is very, very hungry to make things that players will love. We want to give the players something that they've been wanting for a while. I'm really excited to see how players respond to it because we've seen how much gameplay we've gotten out of it. I hope it players don't want us to turn it off. 
what I'm hoping for really is to listen to what players like about this mode, what players don't like about this mode. The best, best case scenario is that we find an audience of people who are like, I really wanted to love League, but I just wasn't clicking with the Summoner's Rift pattern of play, and this is actually the thing. Is that good? You wanna, you wanna try it? I'll, t I'll take a crack at it. I'm punch drunk now. I don't give a All right, so you... And Dan Eric, you put that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, then Stosh, then yeah. you got it. Yeah, that's the best.